afternoon, everybody. I'm a little bit excited, of course, here because you're, you all are such native English speakers, and I'm not, but I hope that you ask if you understand. If you don't understand, so we manage. A little bit about my background. As you told, this is University of Applied Sciences, and our main task is educate and do research and development. And my special area is this research and development and the use of ICT, online learning, online teaching. And a little bit where I come from. I live in Helsinki in south of Finland, but I work in Hämeenlinna and it is 100 kilometers from Helsinki. And this is very practical way to practice also e-working all the time. I don't want to uh, drive every day 200 kilometers by car. That's why I work quite a lot from distance. I have done it now 12 years in Hamk. And also our university is, um, is located on seven different campuses. That's why also our teachers and staff all the time use like, quite a lot e-working methods. Um, during my 12 and another 12 years, I have considered this triangle. Uh, and I have noticed that also in this conference, you all consider uh, which of these angles goes ahead. And mostly we who are developing online learning and ICT methods, uh, we are uh, criticized that we go always the technology shoulder ahead. So I have done also, there were times when we developed and have done research of how to use learning platforms, then came online meeting uh, rooms and online classes, WebEx, uh, ACP, Illuminate, things like that, Skype, and we researched how to use those. Then came social media, or again new tools, and now, of course, everybody is considering how to use tablets and what is the most clever way to use those. In Finland, we have used more mobiles, not so much tablets, and you can understand why, especially when you have read news, what has happened with Nokia. Nokia didn't uh, trust on tablets, and that's why in Finland we more like mobiles. Now we start to consider perhaps we also need more tablets. Uh, when we consider this pedag pedagogy, of course, there have been times when we have thought more when we use ICT that what is the best pedagogical uh, model. Is it action, action research or is it uh, questionary, uh, question based training or project based, based tra training or what it is? And then we also have had the times when we have mostly considered teachers and staff competencies. So teachers know enough how to use ICT. And I believe that we have put thousands and thousands of euros and pounds to um, educate our teachers to use these tools and technologies and um, develop better pedagogical methods. Sometimes I wonder if I am a very bad teacher. I have now trained 30 years teachers, and I see the huge work in front of my, again, what, it, what's the wrong, what's, what have I done wrong? But I was very happy when I have now listened to what happens in England. I am not the only one who has this problem. Oh, that's why I also have considered uh, new, new teaching and learning methods. And I must say that this morning when I listened to Eric Mazur, I really was happy. I noticed that 
I can agree all those things, he told. And actually, I don't know any anymore speak about what is peer learning because um, he told everything I was trying to say and he had done it very perfect way. But I really consider if all old students achieve better outcomes when we use peer learning methods. And why I'm now concentrating on adult learning is that, that I have done now research during five years with adult students. I'm not teaching very much. I instruct so two courses per year, one for young students, they are 18 until 70, uh, 24 years old, and then adult people, they are 25 and 60. 65 years old between that. But I have now, during five years, given courses for oral people, and I have done also research, and I have developed this peer teaching and learning methods. And I really wonder if formal learning is nowadays enough, even for young people, but for adults, that, that that's any more the way to uh, develop pr professional competencies. And one research area is also how these new digital literacy skills are learned and taught. This peer learning, it means for us mostly collaboration and communication. And there are some elements which we really need that peer learning happens. And the most important, perhaps, is trust and respect. That there is the feeling that I can share my opinions, I can share my knowledge, my wisdom, I can share my experiences. And also, I can share my errors. That's perhaps the most important thing that we also can tell that now I haven't managed very well and I have a problem. If, only if we share what we have done, then we can also learn from each other. And as Eric Matzers said, we learn truth doing what others are doing. That's the only way. And when we share and we um, trust and respect, it really motivates us and gives meaning for peer learning. And also then we are engaged and we are empowered to do things together. And this is quite exciting. For instance, with Elizabeth, we have been, been peer learners now during 12 years, and I believe that we, have, we are all the time in two roles. We are evaluators and we are target of evaluation. And it really demands um, that um, we concentrate on peer learning and we also stand if other people are not saying only kind things for us. That's the best way to learn, if I really hear what I can do and what I c cannot do and where I can be better. And so, so we learn to know or recognize what is important and we also recognize to, uh, the quality and how we can use these high quality best practices in our own practice. Uh, I call these best uh, practices and quality that these are like sweet cakes, different sweet cakes which I can use and perhaps I can develop these then further and be better. When I consider adults as peer learners, I don't know if they are different than young people, but I have a feeling that there are constructs like in fin Finland, we have summers and winters. So also, when we are peer learning, 
with other people. We have um, different experiences and attitudes and motivations, needs. And this really demands a lot of discussions and trust that we can share ideas. Uh, during last year, I have done some uh, online courses, uh, English on online courses, and there I found this um, 70, 20, 10 learning. And this, was, this is quite exciting uh, structure. And I, with all students, I really must consider this framework, because that's true that our oral students, they uh, are learning or studying during weekends and, and evenings. They don't come very often to our campus, and we ought to offer teaching and training and exercises, practices, where they can um, practice the knowledge uh, in their own workplace. And we also ought to offer them uh, possibilities to learn from other people, that there are networks and conversations. Uh, Charles Jennings hasn't, isn't, is not the father of this idea, but I have listened to him and found that he has very nice ideas. You can find better, uh, more uh, theory of this. And how I have now developed this peer learning, peer learning it's the uh, course where we study various working methods and possi possibilities of new technologies and social media. And it's five credits. And at the beginning, this course was compul compulsory. Uh, so student, students, they had possibility to choose this. But nowadays, students are, have been so interested in this course that they demanded that everybody must go through this course. That's why our students' amounts have been increased. And when we start the course, we always ask what are their skills when they start and how they uh, feel, how is their online identity, identity. And this is quite exciting that nowadays most of students, they think that they have moderate skills. There are some experts who already think that we know already these things. Actually, we don't need any more of this course. But I'm always amazed when I offer the opportunity that you can get the grade if you just saw that you have these skills. And all those students who tell that they are experts, they want to stay and uh, have the experience of this peer learning. And all those who say that they are experts, they are, I must say, almost always uh, most enthusiastic that they have done this course because they have so much new, new things during this course. And then there are students from uh, many branches, and I must say that um, people who are working on social and healthcare, for instance, and business, they are very interested in these things. But there are many engineers who say that I never will use any open tools, and I never will tell that what I'm doing. I don't go to Facebook and tell everybody that I'm reading the book or I have traveled there and there. And when they realize that perhaps this is not only Facebook, this is really the method to do networks, those engineers who at the beginning were claiming that this is not important for them, they have realized that this is just a huge possibility. And it was just two weeks ago I received email from one student. He had studied 
three years ago, and he thanked me because he has now mm, um, opened his own um, business, and he told that this course was the beginning for the whole new life. Oh, it was just... <laughs> I felt a little bit that it can't be true. <laughs> but the self-organized learning, this is the main focus in this peer, peer learning. These students, they themselves, they take responsibility for their learning. And the idea is that they are working on, uh, with other people and in workplace and not so much in um, at the university. And we have at the beginning the face-to-face -face meeting. It's two hours. There we tell the main idea of what we are going to do. But students don't need to come to campus. We arrange also the possibility to do all this online. We record on all lessons, and nowadays lessons are recorded uh, ahead, so that everybody, everybody can go through those reco recordings. And all learning materials are open. They are in Google Docs, uh, Google Docs site. If you are interested in, you can go and look what kind of materials we have. Um, we have also offered English course. Nowadays, the material is also in English. But I must say that it's better in Finnish because we now have developed it five years. And I have very good teacher team. I started alone. Then I... Um, uh, there were one uh, student who wanted to come with me and prepare some learning materials. When we had English course, there were five teachers uh, offering this course. Um, you consider that there must be a lot of huge amount of money that there are so many teachers, but we have just shared the um, money so that everybody receives what they want and they, the, what they can uh, receive. They have special hours for that course. But I must say that nowadays, uh, Teachers also see that this is the way to develop their own skills, and they are just interested to be in this course and develop their competencies. The most important method this is team project. So at the beginning, uh, students uh, form teams and they are working for in four or five per, uh, persons teams. Then we offer the, them online meetings and small group uh, coaching. And at the end, they write a report where they tell what they have learned, and they, then they reflect each other's reports and learn m something more when they are giving this, this feedback. And when I think this, my triangle, technology, pedagogy, competencies. We have developed all the time new pedagogical methods and competencies, and we have considered a lot of these technological issues. Um, in universities, we have used quite a lot closed uh, learning environments and tools. Then we have taken the so-called semi-open tools to use, but our students, they really need these open methods so that they have possibility also form their own groups where they can discuss and do things. For instance, my students, they have their own Facebook where they discuss, and it's also an easy way to receive the message to all students. And one thing I wonder is that they have free hands, but they have done quite well this course. Only few have finished the course, dropped, and then they have had a, a good reason. And I must say that at the beginning, students are quite confused. They haven't 
uh, used to have so open possibilities because they have free hands, but then they notice the idea, and I think that they just uh, empowered to do these things. And I see that peer learning really works in this kind of courses, and we develop it further, but we need all the time new practices, channels and networks, connections and collaboration, and leading on all levels. Um, individual leading, I must really know what I'm doing, team leading, and then the whole organization needs leading methods that we can uh, improve this peer learning. Thank you. That's all.